And yep, I'm Dwight Kynes, but I've been known here for many, many years as Janet's husband. <laughs> she was baptized here. Her grandfather was one of the founders of this church, raised the money, built the building. Her dad and mom have been lifetime members here. Don't see dad here this morning. Uh, and we got married here back in 1980, right back standing right there, uh, and have been uh, active and here ever since. Our kids came through CDC, through Sunday school, through confirmation, handbells, choir, uh, UMYF here, and Towson was a huge part, and the people in it, Towson and the people here were a huge part of making them what they are today. They're involved in their church, they're involved in their community, uh, they just about always put other people first, uh, and they give back with both their time and their money. So we obviously love this place. And I see God's grace in action here in the quality and quantity of our mission outreach. Note, uh, first of all, I consider, Ver consider Vernon Severe a mentor. Uh, for those of you who don't know Vernon, he's probably the godfather of mission here. Uh, Godfather's probably the wrong name, maybe the patriarch. We'll call him the patriarch of mission. Um, and consider him to be one of the two or three most influential people in, in my life. Uh, but took mission to another level about 30 years ago at Towson. So anyway, no need to talk about the specific projects. You know what they are. They're in your bulletin. You'll find two or three or six of them every week. And if you're anything like me, you sit there and you think, holy cow, are we really doing all of these things? Well, the answer is yes, we really do all of these things. Our mission team sometimes spends more time fitting our projects and our uh, charities into the church calendar than coming up with and vetting new ideas, uh, which is done also. I'll tell you guys that every project uh, that, that you see has been reviewed and discussed and questioned and evaluated projects and organizations that make sure that it's something that we want that we feel the congregation wants to support. We use guidelines that have been placed for many, many years before they come to the membership. And then you guys make it all work. It's really uh, impressive. Thank you very much for making it all work. It's an incredible amount of assistance from what is really a relatively small congregation. But we're growing, which is very fun. So, when I look at why we continue to support our church, there are two primary reasons. The obvious one is that we want to keep things rolling, regardless of the program that you're interested in or enjoy the most, whether it's mission or young people, music, congregational care, outreach, education, whatever it is, they all need to be financed. But just as importantly, we feel very comfortable investing here. Besides the money going directly to the programs and showing immediate results, which it usually does, for the past 5, 10, 15, 40, 66 years, our members have watched our money very, very closely. We've spent it wisely, we've invested it intelligently, and we've made ends meet when the going gets tough. Some of those members are still here, others are no longer with us. But I can assure you that the group that is watching our investments and finances today are using the same principles that those folks have used over the last 60 years. And we're doing it as transparently as we can. There are no secrets with the finances of our church. Don't believe me? Ask anyone on the leadership board a money question and you'll get an answer, or at least they'll try to find you the correct answer somewhere. You'll find us to be a very open and direct about the status of our finances, the purchases, or whatever it happens to be so that you can feel as comfortable about investing your money as we do. So thank you guys for all that you do to support our programs.